epic journey ends with a win. A victory lap for Baby T to pick up his first career win on the Unleash the Beast series. Tiago Salgado goes a perfect four for four. Give a little notch in the belt for not only the Florida Freedom, but for his campaign to get to the World Finals and more importantly, to get inside the top 15 to guarantee a spot to championship weekend at AT&T Stadium. We'll go through it all right here on PBR Now, presented by Tractor Supply. Luke Kaufman here today to give you guys the rundown and the play-by-play. But let's talk re-ride. Let's break this down by the big rides over the weekend in Nampa. Easter holiday, Thursday through Saturday. But we have big rides from the beginning of the week all the way to Saturday night. Let's start in round one. Dalton Castle, world title contender. 88 points here, getting a huge opportunity to uh, kind of gain some ground on Casio Diaz. We'll talk about him in just a minute. But 88 points here versus Bowman. Another notable name that's just quietly been climbing the ladder in that world standings. He was on the outside looking in and the danger zone wasn't even in the top 35 a matter of weeks ago but now Keyshawn Whitehorse is gathering things up and putting in some big numbers as well here's another 88 point score well Nixon Bucking Bulls bringing you Burning Man right there 88 away into his hand rather but just a just a solid showing from what we've been really starting to see week in and week out for Keyshawn Whitehorse he felt that pressure and he has been performing well with it here's young John Krimber as well one of the top three in the world Little John, 18 years old on cookies and cream, getting a 89-point score here in round two. That was the high marker ride there on Friday night. They're in a sold-out Nampa crowd. But let's get down here to the final day of competition. This is where we start to see Tiago Salgado gain traction. He'd already ridden two bulls up to this point. He conquers Bubba G here in the third round to uh, get the number one spot, to get a great pick in the championship round. That puts the pressure on everyone else. People like, well, the Iceman, Kaique Pacheco, he says, give me the heater, Ricky. Ricky Vaughn says, let's go. 89 points here in the championship round. That was just the start of the championship round. He was a ways down coming into that final round of competition, and Pacheco does what Pacheco does the best. Ice running through his veins, 89 points to get a top five finish. Let's go to Alan DeSouza, another guy that is just He's been hard to stop, you know, with injuries, with being on outside of the top 35 from the beginning of the season, he has had to battle. He's had to put in extra work, and it has been paying big dividends. Dark thoughts and 88 points there. Let's go to Dalton Castle. Mike's motive here, one of those perennial top 10 finishers in the, in the Yeti Bull of the Year race. Mike's motive dispatches him. No score in the championship round. That puts the pressure on the final two. Let's go to John Krimber. He has the Kraken in the championship round, and look here. Three tenths of a second away from getting this one road right there. That direction change was enough to bring him down to the inside. Doesn't get his second event win of his young career, but he challenges. They go back on time. He actually lost a tenth or a second two on that one. But here's Tiago Salgado. The cap off, mark off, walk off ride, whatever you want to call it. Brewster, 88 and three quarter points. Huge win for Tiago Salgado. And, and, and when I say huge, he needed this so bad. Not for, not for his career, not for the eyes that are looking at him as far as the PBR team season is concerned. He did that for himself. And a standing ovation inside Nampa on Saturday night. Congrats, Tiago, the Florida Freedom member. There's your top five at the end of the weekend, shaping things up. And how do the UTB standings look? Well, Tiago Salgado outside the top 10, but he has gained quite a bit of ground. He's 14th right now. The top 15, that's going to come into a, a big play at the end of the elimination rounds. We'll talk about that as we get closer to Fort Worth and ultimately AT&T Stadium. Casio Diaz, still the number one man in the world right now, but it was not a good weekend for the number one man on the planet. 0 for 3 on the weekend. This was his third round ride versus centerfold, and watch the dismount against Blake Sharp and Mike Floyd's centerfold right there. Ow. And we know the injuries. We know the, the, the adversity that, that Diaz is having to push through this late in the season. We see this a lot. We see a lot of guys pushing their body to the max, pushing their, their mental health to the max. It, it, it is a tough time of the season, and we are sending good thoughts to Cassio Diaz, the number one man in the world. And speaking of uh, another man that is on the outside looking in, we had a huge update via social media just today. Jose Vitor Leme talking about his injury and trying to battle back and get in competitive shape. You know, the two-time world champion, the two-time MVP, trying to uh, battle back in this 2024 season, but he has made the announcement this week 
that he will step away from Unleash the Beast competition for the rest of this year in preparation for the upcoming team season that starts in July. So we send well wishes and uh, many thanks for Jose Vitor Lime and uh, can't wait to see him in the 2024 Camping World Team Series. When we come back, we're going to talk about the bull race. We're going to talk about specifically Manhater and his domination to get his first Yeti Bull title with the legendary Cody Webster right here on PBR Now when we come back. Welcome back to PBR Now presented by Tractor Supply. Let's talk Power Bull rankings this week. And it's not about, it's not about the Easter Bunny. It's about Best Tech's legend. 44 and three quarter points against Philippe Ferlon over the weekend. Easter holiday in Nampa, Idaho. Dispatches him, gets another high mark ranking bull award on the 2024 UTB season. And uh, that's good for business. That's good for the bottom line. Looking at the bull standings for the season, man haters still a ways out front, but Best Tech's legend gains a little bit of ground there. Still about a point and a quarter away from man haters average bull score, 46.72. Amazing. Looking at all the bull power, talking about the bull power, and if you've been to a PBR event, you see how how powerful, how intense those bulls are. Nobody sees it better than the man that's right there on the dirt, right there front and center. He's got the best seat in the house. One of our U.S. Border Patrol safety team members joins us here today. Pendle to Whiskey takes us behind the chutes. Was none other than the million miler himself, the movie star, the superstar, the bull man, Cody Webster. What's up, brother? <laughs> oh, How's it going? Luke, we're doing great, man. It's uh, just here hanging out on the movie set, but uh, found a little time to jump on with you guys because the bull power this season has been unbelievable. Well, we'll get to the Bulls in a minute. Talk to me about the rookie class. I, I, I want to get your insight. You, you know, you've been a part of, of the premier level of PBR for the last decade. You've seen the ins and outs. You've seen the Jose V. Torlemes come through. Uh, but this, this year's special, Cassio Diaz, John Krimber, Clay Guyton, how fun is it to watch those guys, and, and where do they stack up with the uh, all-time greats as far as rookie classes go? Well, it's been really neat just to be, you know, ground level and seeing what these guys are doing. And, and at kind of the start of the season, I thought, well, the guys are coming in. Uh, they, they really don't know what to expect yet. So to say, you know, getting on these type of bulls day in and day out. But uh, as the season has went on, we've seen these guys get busted up. You know, you're seeing John Krimber, you're, you're seeing Cassio Diaz, Clay Guyton's another guy that, you know, has got took out of competition right now just due to an injury, but we'll be back for world finals. But you know, to see see them guys like Cassio right here getting on Manhater. I mean, to see this guy, what he's doing, uh, being a rookie is unbelievable and unheard of, to be honest. You know, Jose showed up and, and made a big splash. But this cat here is doing everything it takes to be a world champion. Yeah, and it's rookie season, too. I mean, that this is the ride we were watching from Albuquerque the other day, 93 and a quarter points. But... 94 and three quarters a few weeks prior to that. That was the first time that he rode that bull. Let's talk about that bull specifically. Man hater, I, I, you know, I've watched a lot of bull riding from, from right there ground level. I, I could argue that you and I both have some of the best seats in the house week in and week out as far as getting to see, you know, right there in the front facing action, you know, even better than, than the fans that are on the front row. But talk about the magnitude of power that man hater has this year. Well, just the, the thing that is so neat about Manhater is is he's there's nothing dirty about what he's doing. And by what I say is dirty is he has the same bucking pattern. He's he's just he's he reminds me a lot of like Sweet Pro's Bruiser, uh, the world champion bucking bull because he is just he's just so ranked. There's nothing dirty about it. He does his job day in and day out. You know, to me, I think it's his uh, battle to lose. But at the same time, when you're looking at a bull like uh, legend that's coming up, you know, that's right behind him, right on his heels. Uh, to me, you know, uh, man hater cannot have a, a bad day. If he has one bad trip, it could definitely cost him the title. And it all boils down basically to world finals week. When we get to eliminations here at Cowtown Coliseum, then the redemption round and ultimately AT&T, that's where we see the pressure get put on the riders, but the, the bulls as well, you know, they handle it a lot better, but it, it's, it's so fun to watch when those bull racers are close and it gets down to those final couple of rounds and seeing those bulls display and, and the energy there world finals. There's, there's nothing next to it. No, that, that, and there's no doubt when you roll into Fort Worth, Texas, you know, a lot of these bulls are kind of centralized around uh, the Fort Worth area. So to be able to, to make a short drive be, you know, legends coming from Georgia, not that far. Uh, I think everything going for these bulls is what makes them just a little bit better. And, you know, legend right there, it, the, the bull is so solid. But the thing about legend is he's unpredictable. 
he can be one ready one week and go back the other direction the next week. He really bucks off Phil. Uh, man hater is more kind of a, a patterned bull. But hey, when they crack the late gate, they both are bringing everything they have to be the champion. Yeah, and looking at the bull standings, the top 10 right now through the season so far after, you know, 15, 16 events, there, there's still a lot of good names in there. Uh, Mike's Moto visible, you know, he, he ends up in the re-ride pin uh, a lot of times, but that's because he is so dependable. He's so reliable. Riding solo, he's still in the mix. You know, 44 and a half uh, point average bull score on nine different outs, smokestack, uh, a lot of good bulls st still there in the contention. Like you said, if, if one bull stubs his, stubs his toe or stubs his hoof, so to speak, uh, any of these other bulls could slip in there and, and, and have a great, great week at the World Finals. Well, and I also think one to, to not forget about is Red Demon. You know, the last couple trips we've seen that bull have has been outstanding. Uh, let him get kind of on a roll, get some more outs here towards the finals. Uh, that's a bull that I really see coming into World Finals. It could almost be the sleeper of everything, Luke. So talking about World Finals a little bit, we'll switch gears and go from bull riding. We'll go to freestyle bullfighting. After May, not, May 10th and 11th at Cowtown Coliseum, newly announced Ultimate Bullfighters in partner with you, JB, the entire UBF gang. We're doing midnight bullfights again. Talk about the intensity of the show. Talk about having a midnight show after the best bull riders in the world take on the elimination round. Tell us a little bit about how fun that is to watch and experience inside the Coliseum during World Finals week. Well, last year, you know, rolling into there after the World Finals uh, performances, you know, we had the midnight bullfights and it was really, really uh, a treat to watch because you're right there in that atmosphere. You just come off the hype of the final performance. Uh, everything was just right to have a great bullfight. And, you know, the bullfighters really brought their A game. A really good set of bulls was there. And, and you know, that's everything that you need to have a good mixture. But uh, these guys, they're on a roll. You know, we've seen some great outings in Albuquerque, New Mexico, just a few weeks ago. Uh, the Ross Hill benefit was just last week. So to see all that going on, these guys are on their toes. Uh, they've got the taste of money. And they got the taste of, of, of wanting to go and win. So uh, I'm excited to see what the, the Cowtown Midnight Bullfights bring. It's a pleasure, brother. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking a little time away from the movie set. We'll see you this weekend in Sioux Falls. And uh, thanks for being with us. Sounds good. Thanks for having me, Luke. When we come back, we're going to talk to uh, one of the assistant coaches of one of the highly anticipated teams at Kid Rock's Rock and Rodeo, the assistant coach of the Freeriders. Join us right here on PBR Now, right after this. The pick's in. Pick is in. The pick is in, and the first pick of the Kid Rock's Rock and Rodeo is... What are you guys thinking? You're watching these, these other teams start to move, start to shift things around. You guys are just kind of in a waiting position, a holding position, but you're going to see a lot of great names. What's the thought process for the free riders? There's a lot of really good ones that don't get picked. And so we're just keeping track of who's already on the WCRA leaderboard that also uh, has or hasn't declared, and then also those people who have declared and aren't going to be chosen that we'll try to encourage to get to Corpus to qualify. The fast approaching Kid Rock's Rock and Rodeo all combined in and out, 54 world championships, aggregate title wins at the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo, $89 million in career earnings. That's in the athletes, that's in the coaches. It is a who's who in Western sports. May 17th is fast approaching at AT&T Stadium and it'll shake out a head-to-head -head bracket style elimination type format. And uh, one of the teams, really the only team that is unsure of their roster, well, they're not going to know their roster until after Rodeo Corpus Christi here today. The Free Riders are joined with us here today by the legendary Lindsey Roster Sumter, uh, the commissioner of Women's Rodeo World Championship, uh, Rodeo College uh, coach. Uh, Lindsey, look, you guys are kind of sitting in the wings waiting everything happen. We watched a little clip from the draft that happened. Talk about having to sit there and watch some of the best in Western sports get picked in the seven different disciplines and talk about your, you and Bobby's strategy uh, kind of waiting to see how things unfold in Corpus Christi. It was a daunting day to sit there and watch the top athletes of the leaderboard for Rodeo Corpus Christi get picked off one by one after another. Um, but really, when you look at the list, they left a lot of cowboys and cowgirls on there for us to um, have a chance at who is going to go to Rodeo Corpus Christi and win. 
Yeah, so 10 athletes uh, essentially were picked out of each discipline. That's uh, with all of the nominations. I think all in all there were 400-something you know, athletes that declared for the Kid Rock draft. So that leaves a lot, uh, a lot of talent still out there, like you said. But talk a little bit about the process now. Now you have to not only – you know, weed through those guys and find out who you want. But more specifically, you have to convince them to be there in Rodeo Corpus Christi. And more importantly, we need them to win, right? Well, the coolest part about our team, free riders, is, is that they are going to be composed of a bunch of athletes that are already winners. They're going to leave from Rodeo Corpus Christi, either winning first or second. And then from there, they're going to go ahead and, and get on our team, free riders, for the Kid Rock and Rodeo. So the process from now is the, the nomination process stops. The cutoff date is April the 6th. From there, we take the top 20 athletes to Rodeo Corpus Christi. They'll compete in, in two rounds. There's a wild card round from the bleederboard status nine through 20. And then we have round one, round two, the semifinals and finals. And those are the Cowboys and Cowgirls, the, the two that we're going to take. If there is somebody, say for instance, like Kelsey Chase in the breakaway roping, who's going to go to Rodeo Corpus Christi and compete for the money there, because there is $600,000 up for grabs at Rodeo Corpus Christi. So if she wins first, then we move down the list of the athletes at Rodeo Corpus Christi. So let, let's let's focus a little bit about the format. You know, you talked about how to qualify for Rodeo Corpus Christi, but talk about this event specifically. You being a collegiate rodeo coach, you know, head to head, uh, fueling that competitive fire. Is is there any other format? Is has there ever been anything else like this that that rivals Kid Rock's Rock and Rodeo, where you know two breakaway ropers, two barrel racers are are running simultaneously in the arena and fast time wins. There hasn't been in a long time. I know um, recently um, at my alma mater at Cal Poly, Ben Londo put together the breakaway, breakaway roping and he had head-to-head -head competition um, for the breakaway ropers. But I don't know in any other circumstance where there's been two bulldoggers, two team ropers, two, you know, two other disciplines besides in the rough stock that have gone head-to-head -head with the red light, yellow light, green light, gates open, go Adam competition. So that aspect of it is going to be so exciting. It's going to be really hard to focus on who you're going to watch because they, they, it's going to happen so fast. But I do think that this concept is going to be very easy for the non-traditional rodeo fan to go sit and watch. They just know whoever finishes the job first is going to win and they're going to advance. So that's a pretty cool new aspect to this rodeo. You said a $600,000 purse at Rodeo Corpus Christi, the million dollar payout at Kid Rock's Rock and Rodeo. There's another little uh, competition that's going to be happening over in Cowtown that week as well. It, it is a huge week in Western sports. Women's Rodeo World Champion as well. You, we've got a minute. Let's, let's touch on that. Another record-breaking payout for 2024 for the women of professional rodeo. Absolutely. The PBR and the WCRA, they felt that women in the rodeo business were underserved. This will be our fifth year for Women's Rodeo World Championship. We've already awarded over $3 million to female athletes alone. We have $750,000 added to female athletes in the breakaway roping, team roping, heading, healing, and barrel racing. We classify the ladies. They stay in their lane through the competition. We will have our finals at AT&T Stadium on May the 18th with the PBR World Finals. The winner getting $60,000. Our nominations are still open until April the 14th. There's still time to get nominated and, and get your spot in the top 20 for the leaderboard for Women's Rodeo World Championship. Uh, it, it is unprecedented. It's record-breaking, and it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Kid Rocks Rock and Rodeo, Women's Rodeo World Championship, Rodeo Corpus Christi. You can find it all at WCRARodeo.com. You can go to PBR.com as well. Lindsay, always a pleasure. Uh, good to see you. We'll see you at Rodeo Corpus Christi, and we'll see you May 17th at Kid Rocks Rock and Rodeo. Sounds great. Go Team Free Riders. When we come back, we're going to talk uh, Unleash the Beast, where we're going for the Velocity Tour. We'll talk a little Weekend Warrior as well, right here on PBR Now, presented by Tractor Supply. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to PBR Now, presented by Tractor Supply. Let's look at this week's Kubota Weekend Warrior. That takes us to the Pinnacle Whiskey Velocity Tour. Alvaro Ariel gets a win, much needed, on the Velocity Tour. 87 and a half point score here. Will not be long before we catch him on the Premier Series of the Unleash the Beast. As the standings are shaping up as we get one week closer to Corpus Christi, the Velocity Tour Finals right there. Ederson Santos still on top. Dawson Branton, Grayson Cole, Marco Rizzo still all battling within. 
really a points uh, or an event worth of points away from the number one spot in that $50,000 bonus. It's important, the Velocity Tour standings as a whole in the top five, because at the end of that, those men will come into play when we get to redemption round at PBR World Finals happening just a couple days before we head to AT&T Stadium. But before we get there, we got a lot of places to stop for Sioux Falls, South Dakota this weekend, Friday through Sunday at the first Premier Bank Center. Billings, Montana, the weekend after that. Then a little midweek show there in Everett, Washington, and then a hop and a skip across the bay at Tacoma, Washington. And then we end the regular season for the Unleashed of East in Louisville, Kentucky, with a week off prior to going to Cowtown. Velocity Tour schedule, wrapping things up on the West Coast, Fresno, California this weekend, Eugene, Oregon after that, Lincoln, Nebraska, Wichita, and ending their regular season in Grand Forks, North Dakota, prior to going to Corpus Christi. And uh, you can catch all the action this weekend at Sioux Falls uh, Friday, Saturday night happening on Rye Pass, 8.30 p.m. Eastern on Friday, 7.45 p.m. Eastern for the first half. You'll get to watch the 15 bucking battle on CBS on Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern, and you'll get to watch Championship Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern live on the CBS Sports Network right there from the Denny Sanford Premier Center. Uh, you know, looking at Sioux Falls, looking ahead and all of the things that have been happening with Jose Vitor Lemay out, Cassio Diaz going 0 for 3 last weekend. I don't know. Look for Dalton Castle. Look for those guys that have uh, quietly been building their fire bigger and bigger to uh, get a big win here in Sioux Falls. A three-day event, a lot of points, a lot of money up for grab. The great time of season to be hot. Uh, with that being said, thank you guys for joining us here on another week of PBR Now presented by Tractor Supply. Tune in next week, and we'll recap everything from Sioux Falls and everywhere else here in the PBR.